Introduction. Juror number 50 says he was a victim of sexual assault and sexual abuse as a child. When he told his fellow jurors of this abuse during deliberations, the room went dead silent. Juror number 50 has told several media outlets that he drew on his personal experience as a victim to persuade fellow jurors to believe Miss Maxwell's accusers, despite the inconsistencies and holes in their stories, even though they delayed disclosing their allegations against Miss Maxwell, and in spite of expert testimony from Dr. Elizabeth Loftus, casting significant doubt on the reliability of their claim memories. This was unfair and prejudicial to Miss Maxwell, and it all would have been avoided if juror number 50 had told the truth during Vor Dyer. Vor, Vor Dyer, which guys, Vor Dyer is, the, is basically the, the fancy way of saying is jury, the jury selection process, okay? But he didn't. To the contrary, jury number 50 repeatedly and unequivocally denied having been the victim of sexual abuse and he denied having any experience that would affect his ability to serve fairly and impartially as a juror. Had juror 50 told the truth, he would have been challenged and excluded for cause. Holy! <laughs> And we're going to laugh here in a second, guys, about how this nigga fucking fucked this one up, all right? The Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees trial by jury. Fundamental to that guarantee is the promise that the jury will be comprised of 12 dispassionate individuals who will fairly and impartially decide based on the evidence or lack of evidence and not on their personal predilections and biases whether the government has proved its case beyond a reasonable doubt for Dyer plays an essential role in this process, jury selection, and it depends on potential jurors to truthfully answer material questions put to them by the court and the parties. That did not happen here. Juror number 50 did not truthfully respond to perhaps the most important question put to potential jurors about their personal experiences, a question that pertained directly to the core allegations against Miss Maxwell. Whether they had been a victim of sexual assault or abuse, juror number 50's false answer undermined for Dyer, resulted in a jury that was not fair and impartial, and deprived Ms. Maxwell of her constitutional right by, to trial by jury. I can't even express to you guys how much of a monumental fuck-up this is. For them to put that money together go to trial for a fucking month, fly those witnesses in, house those witnesses, prepare those witnesses, get the agents prepared, have the testimony ready to go, having all the reports, the discovery, disclosing all the evidence, getting all the fucking um, uh, expert witnesses in line, flying people in. This all costs money and time, guys. They might have to redo all this again because this guy, which I'm going to show you guys what this nigga did, bro. This is some hilarious stuff. I'm sorry. I know you guys are like, Myron, this is a professional podcast. Why are you referring to him as a nigga? Well, I will say this. He was very stupid. And when I show you guys the shit that this guy was doing, you guys are going to see why I have this, this temperament that I have right now. Um... Andrew Cardini, 20 bucks. What a burn. This seems so calculated by putting victims of sens sensual assault as jurors. It obviously going to throw everything off and it can easily be considered a mistrial SMH. So here, guys, they go through the, uh, the factual background, right, of what the jury questionnaire is. OK, it's a 22 page questionnaire containing 50 questions. Groups of 100 or more jurors were gathered in the courthouse in the morning and afternoon sessions. OK, but let's go over what this dude fucking did. All right. So specifically, question 48. So this is one of the questions that, that's that's very important. Have you or a friend or family member ever been the victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault? This includes actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advances, including by stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or media family member. The questionnaire offered three answers. Yes, yes, friend or family member, and no. <laughs> and he said no. And then finally, question 50. Ask potential jurors if there was any experience that they had that might affect their ability to serve fairly and impartial as a juror. 694 individuals answered the questionnaire, Juror 50's questionnaire. Juror 50 questionnaire is attached as Exhibit 1 under the penalty of perjury. Juror 50 answered these questions as follows. Question 13, yes. Juror 50, number 50, could decide the case based solely on the evidence or lack of evidence and not based on bias, sympathy, or prejudice. Oh, man. 
Question 25. He answered no, had never been the victim of a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Question 42. No, there was nothing about the nature of the allegations against Miss Maxwell that might make this difficult, make it difficult for Juror 50 to be fair and impartial. <laughs> Question number 43. Question, juror 50 answered no, did not have any views about laws concerning the age of consent that would affect his ability to be fair and impartial. <laughs> Question 44. Question, juror said no did not have any views about the laws governing sex trafficking and sex crimes against minors that would affect his ability to be fair and impartial. But wait, there's more. Question 47. No, would not have any difficulty assessing the credibility of alleged victims of sexual assault or abuse, just as he would assess the credibility of any other witness. <laughs> Finally, and most importantly, juror number 50 answered no when asked in question 48, if he had ever been the victim of, been the victim of victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault, including actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advance, including by a stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or family member. All right. And uh, yo, yo, it gets better. All right. I'm going to pass through some of this because this is, as you guys can see, this is a very lengthy document. It's uh, 57 pages. Um, the defense uh, really put together a really good um, argument here. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through their evidence on why they, uh, they're, man, they're coming at this guy's neck. That's all I got to say. Watch, look at this shit. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up, bro. So let's see here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so here's the actual evidence. All right. So, um, you know, they make the arguments here, right? They make all their arguments here, right? Conclusion, etc. And I'm going to come back to this, but let me show you all the evidence, okay? <laughs> Exhibit one. Preliminary instructions. Juror number ID 50, okay? You are sworn to give true and complete answers to questions in this questionnaire. This questionnaire is designed to help simplify and shorten the jury selection process. The purpose of the questionnaire is to determine whether prospective jurors can decide this case impartially based on the evidence presented at the trial and the legal instructions given by the presiding judge. And this is basically the juror instructions, guys, right? Do not discuss your questions and answers or this or the case with anyone now or until further instructed by the court. Do not do your own research on the case, right? And they give you all these explicit instructions, guys, okay? On um, and remember, you are sworn to give true and complete answers to all questions. Um, there are no right or wrong answers, only truthful answers. So, <sighs> so they're putting the actual document here, right? There, this is his shit. All right, this is the summary of the case. This is a criminal case. The defendant, G Ghislaine Maxwell, so he knows who it is. All right, strike number one. <laughs> has been charged in this indictment with various criminal offenses. The indictment is not evidence. It simply contains the charges referred to as counts, and the government intends to prove the jury at trial beyond a reason to the jury at, uh, at trial beyond a reasonable doubt. The charges stem from allegations <clears throat> that from at least 1994 through 2004, the defendant conspired with an aide and a better Jeffrey Epstein to entice minors to travel and engage in <laughs> criminal sexual activity to transport minors to engage in sexual criminal activity and to engage in sex trafficking of minor. And then basically they talk about the indictment, which we talked about, guys, right? I read it for y'all. Miss Maxwell has not pled guilty to all charges. Miss Maxwell is presumed innocent. And before she can be found guilty on any charge, the jury must find that the government has proven each element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Schedule, okay? So they give them the schedule. They pulled all this shit, bro. All right? Like, right? They're telling them what time you have to show up. We'll commence on Monday, November 29th. The trial is expected to last about six weeks. Generally, trial will be held five days per week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Trial will not be held. So this is all the instructions, right? Okay. Please answer the following questions. Ability to serve. So, so he's saying no to everything, right? As you guys can see. <laughs> uh, he said yes to this. Oh, man. Okay. So do you accept this principle? Okay. So under law, the facts are for, for the jury to determine and the law is for the judge to determine. Okay. 
you are required to accept the law as the judge explains it to you, even if you do not like the law or disagree with it, and you must determine the facts according to the, those instructions. Do you accept this principle, and will you be able to follow the judge's instruction if selected to serve on this jury? Yes. <laughs> right? So these are all his answers. Right? And um, the, the the ones in questions, right? What, what was the main ones that everyone was worried about? 48, right? So let's go all the way down to 48. <laughs> Guys, like the video, by the way, all right? Because ain't nobody breaking this stuff down like this. All right? So 48. Have you or a friend or a family member ever been the victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault? This includes actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advances, including by a stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or a family member. No. <laughs> Is there any other experience that you or anyone close to you has had that may affect your ability to serve fairly and impartially as a juror in this case? No. Do you wish for any particular answers to remain confidential and to not go beyond the judge, counsel, and the defendant because the answer would embarrass you or otherwise seriously compromise your privacy? He said no. Guess what? Now it's all coming out, buddy. It's all coming out now, man. <laughs> and, yep, sign on the 4th day of November. I, juror 50, declare under penalty of perjury that the foregoing answers set forth in this jury questionnaire are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I have not discussed my answers with others or received assistance in completing the questionnaire. Holy! <laughs> so he is about to get hit with the same exact crime that he convicted Ghislaine for perjury under oath. <laughs> and here's the problem. This woman who clearly was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt is probably going to get a mistrial. But let, 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 hold on. It get, there's but wait, there's more guys. Exhibit two. All right. These are the jur the, the 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 jury instructions. All right. This is the this is the the actual. Is this the fucking teleprompter shit? Oh no, this is the voir dire. Oh yeah, because everything. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so guys, what this is is the um, this is the actual voir dire because. Everything in court, there's there's someone there writing it down. All right? So this is it. The court, juror number 50, juror present. Good afternoon, juror 50. I'm Judge Nathan. It's nice to meet you in person, and thank you for your time. So this is the entire conversation, all right, in court, the transcripts, all right? <laughs> Yo, okay. So they got him dead to rights on that, right? Because now they got everything he said in court is, is there, all right? <laughs> 